All right, guys, welcome back. Earn your leisure. This is going to be a legendary episode. Yeah, something yeah, I'm very, it's very the making of it for sure. Very, very excited about. Before we start, we got some some news for you guys. Atlanta, Atlanta. We come in January ATL. 25th, January 26th. We're doing a two day weekend takeover. It's gonna be uh, January 25th. We having a live podcast with the PTG boys. If you know Brandon, he was a, <laughs> he, he was on our podcast. These young cats out of the city, and they sell cars, but they they, they, yeah, they the moving around like Alpo and Rich Porter in the 80s. Like they got helicopters <laughs> and yeah, Lamborghinis yeah. and all yeah. that. He they, he came to my house the other day. He was like, yo, man, if I know y'all live this far, I would just took the chopper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so PTG is going to be in the building. Mr. and Mrs. Two Weeks Out. Um, crazy, crazy fitness Atlanta. couple in Atlanta. They got the whole fitness game in Smash on Atlanta. Definitely. Um, Kiana Watson, celebrity realtor, superstar realtor in Atlanta. And our brother, Kenny Burns, will yeah. be in the building the as well. Bullheaded bearded crew. We here. Yeah, We're yeah, going to be there. Yeah, for sure. So it's, and it's going <laughs> to be. Y'all got a crazy line. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. We're going to have open bar, private networking event, private dinner. It's crazy. And That's then, just day one. Facts. Day two, we got a workshop with. Um, Alex Good Energy, trucking guru Legend. out in Atlanta. Legend. Um, Andy from Y2K Credit Solutions, going to get your credit right. Peace to the brother. Um, our guy, MG Mortgage Guy, uh, everything you need to know about mortgages, real estate, you're going to cover all of that. And then Max Maxwell, the king of wholesaling, going to talk about wholesaling. So it's going to be crazy. We're going to have all of our other alumni, <laughs> friends. Yo, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Gonna be crazy. <laughs> nah, it's going to be crazy. I ain't going to hold you. So all, your, all the tickets, all that's on our website, earnyourleisure.com, under the events tab. Yeah, hit that tab. Yo, yo. don't wait. Don't wait. Yeah, Please people ask wait, a lot of man. questions that are already on the tab. So just go to the tab. Everything that you need to know about the event is there. The yeah. VIPs, the, the one-offs, everything's there. Nah, everything's right, go to the there. tab. So, all right. We're going to jump right into this. We got my brother, Wallow. Two six seven, um, the legend himself. So, yeah, man. Insta- <laughs> it's been a long time make, in the making. Yeah, bro, nah. Man. People been asking for this episode for a long time, and and I'll get a backstory. Actually, Wallo, I don't even know if I ever told Wallo this, but um, Wallo actually is one of the reasons why we even have Earn Your Leisure because. So uh-huh. what happens was, for months before we had a podcast, I was following Wallo, and um, Wallo is dope. I'll tell the whole story, but he was putting like motivational videos on Instagram. Like he'll do like push ups in the rain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jumping out of garbage cans yeah, like it's jump crazy. out the tree. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm watching these clips, but you know, it's a lot of motivational speakers on Instagram. But his was actually like hitting me like I'm like, yo, so I was sending it to like Troy. I was sending it to all my friends, like, yo, watch this. Like check this shit out. And they like, yo, this is actually pretty dope. And um so I put a clip about fifty cent um taking equity and vitamin water. And um he actually DM me. No, he followed me. He followed me first, <laughs> and I was actually out. I'm like, oh shit, Wallow follow me. Look, they're like, oh, that's I dope. I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, nah, bro, nah, bro. Damn. Yeah, I I, said, nah. I'm like, no, actually, I was, I was with one of my young boys, and uh, I'm like, yo, Wallow. He's like, yo, you made it, bro. Like, that's big. <laughs> that's like, crazy. that's big. Like, that's Wallow crazy. followed you. So then he called me. He called me the night. He DM me. He's like, yo, what's your number? And he called me the next day, and we spoke for like an hour, and uh, he just gave me free game. Like, yo. This is dope. You should do more of this. The backstories of finance, of like entertainment, like this is like something that this is a whole lane you can carve out. And I'm like, yeah, he's like, yeah, you should just like, that's a lane, like the backstory. And that's how Earn Your Leisure, like that's our tagline, the backstories of sports entertainment. Um, so that kind of like encouraged me to do more. So yeah, man, Wallow, it's a legendary story. Um, you know, he, he was incarcerated for 20 years at 16, 16, right? 17. 17 came out and just hit the ground running, like literally hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, and in just over two years, has the number one podcast on Apple uh, Music, has endorsement deals with tons of companies. Um, a book? A book. Oh, <laughs> the merch pop in. Tri- that was an e book. That really don't count. Nah, 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 nah everything nah, counts. Nah, everything counts, count. man. <laughs> everything counts. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to run down this whole thing, but it's just. It's really just inspiring. So first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate thank you. it. I know, I'm, Thanks for I'm, coming, man. Pleasure to be here, man. This is y'all, 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 the, y'all the guys out here, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's real because when we got the phone, when he told me like, "Yo, I'm about to speak to Wallow," he was like, "Yo, I'm like, yo, you think I can hear it?" <laughs> like, yeah, damn, no, no, you know, it's like I was more, I was so excited to speak to him because it was like, "Yo, this dude is giving it to," like, you know, I might, I might have pushed people, you know, in a different way. But the information that he had, I was like, "Yo, this is gonna grab in people, inf- you know, grab people attention and make them want to learn." Mm-hmm. See, like, you know, learning ain't always cool where we from. 
Mm-hmm. So, so to, to be able to you know encourage people to learn through people that they see that celebrities, and you giving up their information, and you throwing these these dollar signs up there, and they got a story with it. Oh, that's that was like man, it was like you know sort of like what I do it was like medicine and candy. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I was like, yo, this is decent. That's what I was telling you, like yo, because it was so many, it's so many stories that we want to know about. Wherever sneaker deals, wherever you know, uh, you know, water, de- all type of deals is going on that we you know. We don't really hear about. Yeah, yeah, like you see how this dude made all his money. You're like, yo, who this guy? And like, it'd be somebody you probably don't even know that that did that created a patent or trademark something or you know just an idea that went you know what I mean or just the negotiated the deal. You like, yo, oh he negotiated that. You know, it, and it can inspire you. Yeah, and and I think it, that it, was necessary when I seen that. That that was definitely was the intention because not only does it inspire you, but it also inspires another generation to see like, yo, this is possible. Yeah, I could do this because he did it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's pretty much what we rooted in. So like one of the, like a lot of people know your story as far as like you know motivation coming out the uh, being incarcerated. But to me, I told you this before. Like to me. The business story to me is is like what really interests me because it's like <coughs> we see you you know you've done deals with Puma, Foot Locker, Hennessy, um, NFL Network, TED Talks, Global Citizens, all of that, right? And like I said, number one podcast, merch, trademarks, book, all of that stuff. But um, at what point? Because we we spoke about this on the phone. Like, at what point did you see the direction that the world was changing while you're actually incarcerated and map out a strategy to hit the ground running? when you come home. Cause I know when you first came home, the first business that you had was selling t-shirts, like yeah. literally like just on the street corner, right? Yeah, yeah. it was just like, I, that was the first thing. But when I was in prison, it was like, I used to I used to read a lot, man. And uh, it was it was a guy called Anthony Bourdain. He was a legend to me. That was like a teacher from far away. Cause Anthony Bourdain had three shows, No Reservation, Parts Unknown, and The Layover. And That's I used it. to watch him on like, you know, different channels, Discovery uh, Channel, all type of uh, travel channel, uh, all the CNN and this dude used to be a heroin addict, mm-hmm. and he got himself together. He used to just be all over the world and exposing people to different cultures and different ways of life and ways of thinking. So I was up on him. Then I used to read all the time, Entrepreneur, uh, Forbes, uh, Black Enterprise, um, and I would read as much as possible, Rolling Stone, GQ, Vanity Fair, and I would read articles about people making it happen, technology, Wired Magazine, and when people used to come to prison, I used to always interview people like about life. Mm. I wanted to know what was going on in life because in jail, life stopped. It's not mm. really life. It's not no oxygen. And so when people would come, I would want to go. I would want to get. I would want to escape the reality I was going through. So my way to escape was, uh, I would just interrogate them, man. Like ask them a thousand questions, man. So about like a new life. Per- somebody new coming yeah, in. New coming in. Okay. And I, when I first heard about Google and YouTube, I was like, man. I didn't believe somebody when they first told me about yeah. Google because it was like, what? You, yeah, well, you could type your name. And I said, why would my name be in there? I've been in jail. Like, how could you type my name and something to come up? And, you know, I saw, I used to write it down in a thing called The Book of Life. The Book of Life is a book that I had, a composition book, and I used to write everything down all over. I, every every inch of that I would use to write. You know, I mean, I might be talking to you or tell me something about an app or, or you might tell me something about a website. I'd be like, oh, I got to remember that. I don't care what time. I got all type of stuff written in that Book of Life. You know, and... uh and it just was like, one day I'm I'm gonna look into it. So my homie he had got a uh, he had, had access to a, a a wireless hotspot and an iPod Touch. And once he gave me that, it was like it came, I came alive. When the first time you saw an iPod, you <laughs> think it was like an alien and like what did Man, you? I dropped it because I, I couldn't believe it when I typed it up and stuff was just popping up. Yeah, you know what I mean. My name and stuff was popping up that you know I was thinking it was like yo this is like. And I thought I, was, I thought I had something that nobody in the world had. Just Google. Google was like, it was like a university to me. It was like free university. You could find anything. You could learn anything. Right. And you know, and you know, just typing that high too on uh, YouTube. So I was like, oh, sh-. I was like, yo, this is. I couldn't believe. It. I thought this was like this was like unreal. I'm like, this is no way in the world. It's people we got this. And because I thought like with this, I got an edge. And I said, damn, I got an edge on everybody out here. Yeah. I so, got the edge. Now you know that's that's powerful because it's like a lot of times we don't take we take stuff for granted, like on the outside, right? Or just people in general. And I never forget like when my cousin came home, my cousin came home from jail and he did like I think ten or eleven years and he saw the iPhone for the first time and he didn't know like he was looking at it and but he didn't say he didn't know what it but he, I could tell he had no idea what was going on. He's like like how you touch it, like you know what I'm saying, like what, what's going on. So it's like <laughs> things like that is like we don't fully understand how powerful what we have are. Like the phone is the most powerful invention 
ever created. Mm -hmm. You got a library. Anything that's ever happened in the history of the world is right in the palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just so at that time, when you're discovering these things, are you formulating like, yo, how am I going to use these things once I leave? To be honest with you, I just was like, yo, I always was a dude that was always a grinder, like a hustler, you know? Because uh, growing up, I used to... Uh, I was a part of a crew called the Low Lights, where we used to boost and steal. You know, they they originated. Polo. Yeah, they originated they from. They did a documentary on them. Yeah, they originated from uh, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, my my OG uh, was a, was a cat named B Bill. Rest in peace, Shice Low. Uh, and uh, he the one that gave me the name Wild Low. Uh -huh. My real name is Wallace, but they used to call me Lil Wally. He made it Wild Low. So I used to boost and steal all that stuff. So I always had like a hustle to me. So I used to sell things. All the time. That's where the low part comes in. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So I used to sell things all the time, and uh, I when I was in jail, I I always studied marketing. I studied colors. I studied. I understood that. I studied attention span. I understood about when I see a commercial on TV. I used to love watching commercials in jail. You know, like you might watch and look at a commercial like that, and I'm watching like yo. I wonder what advertising agency made this mm. that they gave the you know gave the you know contract to to shoot all the commercials. I'm looking at the colors. I'm looking at the time frame. I'm looking at the excitement at the, the you know, the catch your jaw. And so I'm like, yo, man. I studied the t-shirt game because it was like, t-shirts ain't gonna never die out. And I used to sell clothes. I said, I'm gonna get out there. I'm gonna throw some t-shirts. I'm gonna get some bow finds. I'm gonna get some catchy sands, and it's on. I'm gonna go out there because I just knew stuff. I, I studied symbolism, and I said, when I go out here, it's on. Because I said, I literally said, I'm gonna fuck shit up out here because people sleep. Because as I was be on Google and all, I used to be on social media and I used to see that people was out here celebrating nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, I got to tell you. You know, because, you know, for me to be able to have this, this, this leverage of being in prison, because in prison, everybody is like on dinosaur time. They stuck in the time that they came in on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're part of a world that don't exist no more. So what that did is they, that put me up in today. It told, it told me about tomorrow. And I was like, it's not, nothing can stop me with this. If I got this, that's all I, you know, would say and tell my people, I just want two phones. When I come home, you know what I mean? I just want two, you know what I mean? And it was like, I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna just destroy this shit. And I knew that people lack, I knew people lack grind, they lack imagination. And I knew that, you know, even though I was coming out of prison 37, it was like, I'm gonna be coming out of prison 37, but at the same time, I'm really still gonna be a kid with my imagination because jail stagnated. Jail didn't give me the experience that an average person would have. Like as an adult, you know, you grow, you get experience, and you start to know more things that where's though it limit your imagination because you feel as though, oh, that can't be done, this can't be done, that can't be. As a child, you had an unbelievable imagination right. because you haven't ran up against no walls yet. So I still was in that mind of my imagination is everything. And I was like, oh, I could do any fucking thing. Yeah, you that, know? That's powerful. You still had the imagine yeah. the, the the ability to to dream. Yeah, to I still big. was dreaming. That's that's dope. I still was dreaming. So when when you were like you said you were coming up with slogans like, are you writing these down in the life book? Like yeah, book of life. They coming up. I will to your write head. stuff down. I'll be talking talking trash, or we might be talking. I might see something and think of some remake. You know what I mean? Like like you know, it's always money in Philadelphia. You know that was a slogan come from. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. The TV show. show. Yeah. So I said I would go with that, and I started printing that on shirts, and it was like game time. Like it was like. So when you when you when you come home, like what's the first steps of getting a t shirt? Um, like you like what like how do you? Because you come home, you don't have any money at all. <laughs> no, I had a couple dollars. Okay. Some from my books, a couple people hit me off, gave me a couple dollars, but it don't take nothing to start like a t shirt line. Like you know, just me, went you, to the local the printer. I want this is what I want. They printed I go, it. Up you, for you. Any city you in, you got a. Uh, you always gonna have a t shirt wholesaler somewhere in your town is gonna be where they sell wholesale t shirts, hoodies, whatever. Mm -hmm. I went there. I heard about a guy named Mark, you know, uh, from Hustlers Union. I heard about him in jail because I knew a guy and I knew people that was dealing with him. My homie girl was dealing with him. Uh, she had a clothing line. And when I came home, she took me to him like, yo, here you go. And I was like, okay, it's on. Uh, and I would just buy a certain, I, I don't I forget how many it was, probably like 20. I bought him, took him to him, paid a couple dollars for the shirt, a couple dollars for the silk screening. And I just went with it. I just was like, all right, I'm gonna go sell these. I was selling T-shirts in the wintertime. Hand in hand, hand in hand, man, like Coke. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I just started selling them, and then just and just start. I just start fueling them. At that point, when you are coming up with these slogans I, in your mind, like obviously you've been studying. Are you thinking about I gotta trademark this, or or are you? No, just I like, already I'm, knew about trademarks because yeah. I ran into in jail. I ran into intellectual property attorney. He was in jail, and uh, 
He gave me the game about that, and I read about it. Okay. But he would tell me about intellectual, because I'm like, intellectual property? What the hell? What type of real estate you got? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because you say property. And, yeah. then, and then he said, you know, in the reality, that is like real estate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's still property. It's still stuff that you can make money off forever. Yeah, it's property in your mind. Uh, you know, license. And then I used to watch Shark Tank, and I would see them talking about, you know, asking people they own the joint, and talking about licenses and royalties at the trademark. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is the game. Yeah. So I always was fascinated with trademarks and understanding that, and like, so I said, okay, I'm a trademark shit, and I just write stuff down, write company names, write ideas down, and I was like, I'm a trademark this shit. So one thing I was I was, I was actually <coughs> curious about because it's a business podcast, but we talk about like criminal justice reform and stuff like that. Like when people come home from jail, like for probation and stuff like that, they got to show that they're working, they get a job, they have to have a job, right? Like how did that work out for you? Like being an entrepreneur, they let you rock with that or? Like me, I I, I went, uh, uh, she'd be like, I told her, I don't know what it was, my parole agent just believed in me. I told her what I was going to do because when I came home, like my like my scores, and if I was going, you know, you take like tests, mm -hmm. like, and they test, some of these tests show if you're going, you know, what's your chances of reoffending or whatever, I had low. She was like, you ain't really no problem. I ain't really, you don't use drugs, you don't, what's the name? And I live like a good, Probably like two to three hundred feet from the parole office, literally. Oh wow! Like I was right there. Like okay. my grandma I was living in my grand. So it was like they. She wasn't worrying about me. You know what I mean? She just like some mandated. You got to go to this job fair, whatever I go. But I, I started. I just started getting it, selling my shirt, and I was getting it, man. You know. And before I knew it, it was game time. Yeah. Started doing advertising for people on Instagram. You know to build my thing up. And it was like, it was over at that. I was just getting paid to speak, and it was like, okay, I'm in the game. All right, so in the next segment, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your transition from selling T-shirts to blowing up and being a social media influencer. All right, so I want to talk about social media marketing because a lot a lot of people, everybody that has a business right now, I think, has to be marketing themselves on, on online themselves somehow. They're doing themselves And everybody's trying to do it, but a lot of people is not doing it correctly. They're not doing it right. Um, but you, you caught wildfire. Like, so, all right. Your social media campaign, was that deliberate at, or was that just, you was just doing it and just kind of caught steam and before you knew it, you just, like, did you have a plan for that or you just was doing it and that's how it was already done? You know, I knew, I knew, uh, one thing that I knew, I knew the attention span. I knew that I had to battle with the timeline. So what I did was I knew that, um, wherever I'm laying on the ground with ketchup on my head or wherever I'm jumping off a roof, I had to grab your attention because I had to battle with the girl that was naked mm -hmm. on Instagram, the dude with all the jewelry on, the, the sister with all the designer shit on, dude with all the designer shit on, the rapper, the athlete. So I said, I'm going to give you all something that nobody doing out here. Nobody. And, uh, and But I'm going to give it to you with a message because you're going to stop when you see me laying on the ground with the ketchup. You're going to stop when you see me jumping off a roof and then I'm going to be able to pop it in that one minute and give you a message. You know, like once again, you know, medicine and the candy. So it was like, it wasn't no big, big plot or plan. It was just like, I just was giving the message out, you know, and uh, and it just was my natural me being me. Like I knew, and I knew that everybody out here was afraid to be themselves. So if you got people on Instagram really being themselves, really not worrying about how you look at me, I'm really not trying to oppress you with things or, man, I you could kill shit. And that's what I did, you know? I just was, I guess me was, me me naturally being me was marketing. Yeah, that's a fact. And I always tell people that's the best way. Like people ask, they ask even me all the time, like, you know, different tips. And I'm like, you gotta be original. Me and Troy, I just had this conversation with somebody yesterday. Like, you gotta find your own lane. Mm -hmm. Like there's really no set rhyme or reason or formula. It's like, what works for you? Like this works for us, but what works for you? And I think a lot of times, especially with social media, everybody's trying to like duplicate what's already hot. And the problem is you're always running a race where you're behind somebody. Like you're following and then yeah. it's like a, a turn. Now you gotta follow that turn. Now you gotta follow this turn. It's like if you on your own path, yeah. you, don't, you don't gotta worry about yeah. what you know, else You know what's doing. crazy? I was thinking about that shit and I was thinking about to stay in your own lane, John. And I realized I was talking to a associate of mine. I said, <coughs> I said, man, I'm coming to the conclusion that that whole mindset might be a little dated because we living in a world where it's though it's, it's like, you ever notice how you driving? You got different lanes, you got this mm -hmm. lane, you got, you got the speed lane. 
if you're trying to get somewhere, you be banging all types of lanes. Speed lane, slow it up. Car slow and speed up. Bang, you bet. Like, I think you got to change lanes sometimes. You got because the way the game is and the way the the culture of now is, the culture now it changed so much. Whereas though, can you keep up with the speed of culture? You know, Troy Carter once said that, and and that's the real reality of it is, you might jump in the lane, and you really might be multi talented. Right. Like you might be like that's just like tell a dude, oh man. You, Everybody might come up and get their money some way, but everybody always preach real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. All the billionaires, real estate. You know the saying: all the billionaires got multiple revenue yeah. share. All the billionaires got real estate. Right? You know the same old cliche yeah. shit you always hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you have a dude that got the real estate, but at the same time, he probably came up from a juice company. Right. You got the dude that got the real estate. Same time, he came up probably off of music. This dude, athlete. This yeah. dude. Uh, he might got restaurants. This dude might have gas. This dude might sell, uh, you know, uh, landscape and stuff. So it's like, what do you know? What I mean, it's like, like people is getting money, and then, but at the same time they see stay in your lane. Then at the same time they say have multiple revenue streams. Right. So it's like, what the fuck do you do? But so just do what you feel. It's a million lanes, man. But the key is to, to remain authentic. Even back yeah, to what, 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 what Shadi was saying, it was like somebody was asking us, like, yo, how do y'all do it? And it was like, well, we've been friends for 25 plus years. It's not a how do we do it. It's just naturally what we do. But that's, I'm glad you said that. Like, diversifying your mind, right? Because, mm -hmm. like you said, like, if I stay in my one lane, like I'm a teacher, like, people will only keep me in that lane. So, like, when they hear me even talking about business, it's like, you're not supposed to do that. Like, you know that? You know those things? It's like a shock to people. And then you get to diversify from there. It's like, yeah, I could do this. I could do this. And then you surprise yourself. You're like, damn. Like, I really did that. Like, you got to look at, like, I don't even try to, you know, I don't even try to categorize myself. Because, like, you know what I mean? I advertise. You know what I'm saying? Which is marketing for myself, for brands. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I do speaking engagements. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a host of a podcast. You know what I mean? I manufacture merch. You know what I'm saying? I create, you know, I sell merch. Like, like, what, what, can't, what can't you do? Yeah, what can't you do? <laughs> no, no, I, you know, I don't rap but play sports. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, <laughs> well, you know what I mean? But it's like, at the same time, like, what if I box myself? Yeah. Nah, for sure. You got you to gotta leave all your options open. I just think you still have, you have to be authentic. Yeah, you, yeah, you got to you know be Because a lot of times I think people <coughs> are chasing something that they're not. That's what yeah. I mean by like chasing something. Like not chasing like in different directions, different lanes, but chasing like, okay, this is the wave on Instagram, comedian. I'm going to be a I'm comedian. Gonna this, I'm going to be yeah. an Instagram comedian. Oh, this is the wave on Instagram. I'm going to do this on Instagram. It's like, it's not sustainable because yeah, that's not that, who you, you are. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's not, you're not comfortable with it. Like I'm comfortable with getting up every day and, and, and fucking shit up. Don't want to video or doing video. I'm cool with that. I do that shit in my sleep. And I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? I don't. It's good when you can inspire people. Like I seen a lot of people come after me and wanted to do whatever they was doing, and I respected it. I don't feel no type of way. I yeah. don't. They ain't got nothing to do with what I'm doing. You know? Uh, I guess you just you just you just see people and you just like. I wish people could just. I want people to win, and I wish they do find their thing. You know? And uh, it ain't never too late to figure it out. You can find that shit. You know what I mean? Like I just be like. Phew, I just be like going hard at what I know, and uh, I'm always adding some new shit to my my arsenal. So one thing you told me outside, you was like, um, when, when you was in Soho, and um, you was walking around, he's like, people, most people when they they look at <coughs> they look at the store, they look at thing, they they looking at the store's name, but you looking like as a possible advertiser. Like I'm looking something. at I'm looking at I'm looking at it as they need advertisement. They could be a sponsor for a podcast. They could be a sponsor for an event. They could be a sponsor for a, for community, uh, you know, uh, give back or activate. And like, that's how I see that. I don't see, sh like, I see things differently when I see them. I'm like, okay, bang. But everything is about the introduction to that idea. Yeah. A lot of times you have an idea, but if the introduction to that idea, to who you present it to, don't grab them. I mean, that's why a lot of times you see movies. As soon as the movie come on, you know I mean? You, you see something happen, the car chase, somebody shot, somebody getting killed, you hit a gun. It didn't say six months earlier, but the, intro, the the introduction grabbed you, made you sit here. You like, damn, I want to see what's to this. And sometimes that's what it be. You know, you everybody out here, man. All these businesses, they always looking for new ways to market. You know, 
because you know you got this technology everybody want to be a part everybody want to be hip they want to be cool they want the followers the big brands even do so, yeah you know, it's for like, sure social media is the new rock stars the influencers yeah. for sure so you got to try to figure out how can we partner so how did that how did that happen because I remember one thing you told me a while ago too was like don't always worry about like big brands and stuff like that like take like it might be a small mom and pop that wants to do an Instagram ad like I tell people that all the time especially like when you first starting out but like at what point did you transition to like bigger brands like did that just happen through relationships or did you reach out to them like how did that in the game out here everything goes off of relationships it goes off of your your tracking out here and then when you you know it goes off multiple things but when you get hot man i'm telling you man you get hot out here they coming looking for you i mean i wouldn't say climb it was like it's been two and a half years right uh, so it's been it's been actually thirty four months. Thirty. So at what point? I mean, was it just hot from the start? Like, or no, were there, you no, know, how, people, what was the process? It was it was it was uh, it took time. Like, all right, I was out of jail probably six months, and I uh, that was the first time I got a speaking a real serious speaking check. I think the first speaking check I got was like was it six hundred dollars? I spoke at the school, but I wasn't sure. This dude gave me like six. My first advertising check I got was five hundred dollars for one minute ad on Instagram. Okay. And like six months outside of me being six months of me being home, I done a speaking thing with a, a speaking uh engagement. I did it for fifteen minutes. Do do Big business. Big business. He yeah. gave me he gave me two grand for fifteen minutes. I said, Oh shit, it's game time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I sent that to my Shout parole officer. Business. I said, This is what I'm doing. She said, Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> my parole officer, I sent a copy of the check and I did this how I'm doing it out here. That was based off of what you had been curating already on social media. Yeah, it okay. was based off of my what what he my evaluation that he had for me because I didn't know what I was gonna yeah. get. Yeah. He's from Philly, right? Yeah, he just said come and do it. I went and done it. And he gave me that, you know, and it was like 2000 for 15 minutes. I only been out of jail six months. Game time. <laughs> well, this is my worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I knew everybody probably couldn't pay that, but I knew where to start from. Yeah. I knew, damn, if I get $2,000 plus travel, I could do this. Then I started making moves. You know what I mean? I understood what a, what a one sheet was. I, just, I started looking up, damn, what do a, you know, a contract look like? What type of you know speaking engagement contract? What it look like? What it pull? I'm going online, pulling joints down, going to speakers' pages. Like everything you want is already yeah. out there. So you're doing it yourself. You're not like, oh, I got to get an agent. Or I got to no, get a lawyer. No, I didn't have no agent you, because yeah, you're doing it I didn't really have no agent, but I had friends, you know what I mean, that would help me. And then people do stuff for me, uh, like Nadia, uh, Nisa, you know, my lawyer, Shay M. Lawson. You know, man. One thing about my lawyer, man. Y'all might gotta get her that thing on uh, when y'all going. Uh-huh. Shay M. Lawson. She's from Cleveland, but uh, she she live in Atlanta. She practices out of Atlanta. She's an intellectual property attorney and all that stuff. And uh, I met her down in Atlanta. Like I wasn't home that long, and she was like, "Listen, man, I'm gonna help you." She helped me things. She got me at A3C. She uh, a what? She at A3C festival. Okay. okay she got okay. me there the first year home speaking there. You know, uh, and she was like, listen, you ain't got that much money. Give me what you're going to give me. I'm going to help you get your stuff trademarked. Whatever you give me to, wow. for the filing fees. And I love her. You know what I mean? She always done that. Like, she's a, if you listen to this, check out Shay M. Lawson on uh, Instagram. She really like a, she know other stuff. You know what I mean? And I and I ran into like a couple deals, little small stuff. You know what I mean? Five, six grand type joint. She would make sure that it was, it was right. right. Read the yeah. No, no. Take this out. Take that out. She's a beast. You know what I mean? But her, you know, I had people like her. I had Nisa. I had Nadia. Then was like, like one thing I learned about the game out here, like when you're doing stuff, women approach is way different. Hmm. Like they really be on shit for you. Invest in women. Like if it, women, like you got people like, it's women out here that would try to, like most of my journey was like women that would throw the plug, throw the alley hoop, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh, you know, uh, you know, it was like it was different women, and, and they would they they position you different. Like they be really on that shit. Mm-hmm. They be they work hard. They yeah. work different. Seem like a lot of dudes be bullshit. You know, they be trying to compete with you, or they be trying to be popping. So it'd be crazy. Not all of them, but some yeah. of them. You know. So and like yeah, the thing I like about is the whole package is very polished. Like your website and your bio and all of that. Yo, you know what? It took. Listen, man. I tell you, I done had different websites. It took time, and it took me just looking at people. Like a lot of times, if you know, you got to, like, whatever you're trying to do, like I tell people, look at the people that's doing what you're doing on the next level. 
You see what I'm saying? If you you know, if you trying to be a speaker, it, you know what I mean, you gotta look at look at speaker pages. Look and see how much they charge and look at their website, look how it look. Who who was the guy that all the people that you looked at when you were going trying to model like, you know what? He's doing that or she's doing that. This is what I need to do. I need to charge this. Like who would some? No, of I, did, I I think the charge was like because some people prices were astronomical. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Still are. <laughs> like, like you got some people. You was like, damn. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna be getting that fifty thousand. <laughs> it's like it's like a lot of speakers out here. Like you know what I mean? You got you got the Les Brown. You got the Eric Thomas. You got the uh, David Goggins. You got these type of dudes is out there. You got the Icky Icky uh, Johnson. Johnson. But yeah. but the dude that really broke it down for me was a guy named Maurice Claret. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to my guy, shout out to Maurice Clay. No, Ohio you, you State. Yeah, yeah. One thing about him is that, you know, he gave me the game because once when Maurice Correct came out of prison, was doing his thing, his 30 for 30 documentary came out. Powerful. Uh, his email got swamped. Like a thousand emails, people went to book him. He didn't know how to do it. So he got with people. People ain't wasn't there for him. He tried to give him the game. So he seen when I was coming home, I was man, he sent me an email and I was like, hold up. I know this thing. I was watching his thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know this thing. Boys. Maurice Collette, Ohio, the Ohio State. <laughs> I reached out. Legend. Listen, so I hit him. I'm like, yo, man. I'm like, oh, shit, yo. And what's crazy, like, at the beginning of my journey, I used to be, when I was living with my grandma, I was talking to Maurice every morning. He'd be working out. He'd be talking to me. I got my earphones. I'm shooting my videos. It's raining, whatever. And he's just like, yeah, man, you got something special, man. Wow. You gonna be, you gonna be that guy. That's all he used to tell me. Maurice used to be like, "Yo, man, I'm telling you, man, I see it in you, man. I don't look at a lot of kids. You know, he'd be like, it's a lot of corny shit on it. I don't be looking at a lot of these corn balls. You know what I mean? He'd be like, your shit is like, it's real, it's passion, it's real. I'm telling you, you gonna be like, be like, all right, man, I'll hear you, Maurice. But right now, I'm living with my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm JBM, just barely making it. Just barely, but just Maurice barely was making a pusher. It. He was a dude that you know, you gotta have them pushes in your life. He was a dude that used to push me, be like, yo, you the shit, you got it. Your something gonna happen. And he, you know what I mean, he always say to the day, like, I told you. He be like, I told you it was going to pop, it's going to pop. He said, you ain't even heat up for real yet. Like, he still be talking like that. So it was like, he was a guy that told me about you need a contract, you need this, you need a, you know what I mean, you need a uh, a one sheet. You need, like, he gave me a lot of games. What's a one sheet? A one sheet is basically like, but all your stuff on there, you got the one sheet and you got the EPK, like trying to press kit. Mm-hmm. One sheet is like all the brands you work with, like bio or your stuff, you know what I mean, stuff like that. You yeah. had the logos on there. And he gave me a lot of game, man. You gave me game too, as that's far as the um, the deck. <laughs> we had no idea. A lot of people don't know about the deck. Proposal deck. Proposal deck. Yeah, yeah, that's necessary when you got something you're trying to propose or whatever. Sponsorship deck. Sponsorship proposal deck. deck. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know them, them everything. You know you know what I learned. Whatever you're trying to do is already on Google, bro. Like you you can see templates. You can see somebody else. Like if you type in sponsorship deck, it'll pop up. You know, and then you got people like you know on Fiverr. You get it done on Fiverr. You know, all you gotta do is just have all the language and. And they put it in the format, you know, put the pictures there, they do anything. And it don't cost nothing. Like everything you're trying to do is there already. It's just about, you know what I mean, you doing the research. Like, that's the number one thing that people don't people will call and be like, yo, Wala, how you do this? I'd be like, and I'll send it to him, screenshot, I'd be like, I just Googled it, bro. Yeah. Uh, it was crazy. When when you sent it over, we were like, Oh, this is what a deck is? Nah, that's a fact. And we Could literally we- was like, all right. I mean, we should use that. Uh, they put this here. Yeah. We, yeah. This. we ain't I'm have like, no experience. You know, I'm a financial advisor, choice, an educator. We just coming into the podcast game. So we just learn it as we go. So yeah. when you sent that to me, I'm like, oh, okay, this makes sense. This is how we supposed to actually yeah. format it yeah. so we can and get you know, advertising. And you know what? We got to write a bio about ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> no, we yeah. just copied. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, we didn't know that. We, <laughs> and all you're, yeah. doing, all you're doing is like, one deck is the same deck. Some doings might be fancy, but all that shit is the same stuff. And it's about just... Uh, when you see it, I know when you see it, he was like, yo, this is like simple. We can do this shit like, <laughs> it ain't nothing, you know what I mean? And it be real like that. Like, I just be trying to help people on the aspect of like, uh, I get my blessings, you know, from helping people. Like, mm-hmm. it ain't, you know, it ain't like I'm looking for that turn. Like, they're just trying to school people and help people. Like, because like, I, I, I get excited when I can find somebody that want to listen. Because a lot of people might blow me off like, damn, dude, crazy, tripping in there. They don't understand that I'm very, very informative. Like, dudes used to call me, some some dudes used to call me the information king in jail because I used to always give up information. Mm. That was my thing. Yo, my girl trying to start this. Oh, yeah, she need this. Get with L&I. Here go this. Here go to LLC. Here, man, if she don't want the LLC, yeah, she get a DBA doing business ass, fix his name application. What is that? Boom, boom, we can go to, like, I used to always be on that time. Like, you know what I mean? It was just like you want to start a food truck, or hey, I got to print out the food truck. Here go all the things that the L and I want you to have. You got to have a, you got to have a, uh, the uh, sink right here. You got to have this in there. You got to have this. It got to be this many feet. Here go all the paperwork right here. Go this. So it was like, that was my thing. You know what I mean? So coming out here, that shit easy. 
And I know I, a video that you I really like. One of my favorite videos of you is when you talk about um like relationships. Like a lot of times people scared to like um like no new friends and like they scared to build relationships with people. But you like how you going? That's grow, leverage like? for me. Like coming in the black community. Like a lot of times in the black community, we don't want to mess with nobody that we don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But in reality, a lot of times the people we know, they don't really mess with us when we try to start something to do something. Yeah, like right. you, you'll be like, oh, I don't mess with this person. I don't mess with this person. You don't even mess with the people. I understand. You don't even mess with the people that you pose to mess with or they pose to mess with you. So it would just be crazy. It'd just be like it's a mindset that people got to get rid of, rid of in, order, in order to win. Yeah, that was the post today, right? It was like, yo, invest in the people who are interested in you. Yeah, you got to invest in people that's just like, that's going to invest in you, man. I don't be like, man, I don't be, like, I don't really don't be caring, man. Like I go and talk to anybody, man. I don't care who you is. Like, like I will walk up to you and say, start talking to you. I would DM you and go right into full blown conversation. Like I know you. No, that's a fact. Like I said, when you DM me and we okay. spoke for like two hours, like I never spoke to you ever in life. You DM me like, yo, what's your number? I text you my number, and um, we spoke for like two hours. That's the first time we spoke, and I'm like, yo, it's just genuine dude because it was like, yeah, he didn't ask for nothing. It was, it was just wanted to just have a conversation, yeah, just I give lo- information. I, I, I listen because what it is is like. You sharpen my blade too, cause it's information. Is it energy and informational exchange, a value exchange? I know you had something going on with with this, and I knew that, uh, like from the pieces I was seeing you throwing out, I was like, yo, that shit was decent. Like I was just so fascinated with that, cause I never seen nobody do that on social media. And I'm like, yo, these boys is next level. And I wanted to let you know, like, yo, bro, you next level. This some shit. Keep doing this shit. Ain't nobody doing this. You really could kill them. Yeah. Because, like. Y'all put out the type of information to where's though. It could catch the dude that's working in corporate America. It could catch the kid that's going to, you know, rather, you know, a PWI, predominantly white institution, or a kid that's going to HBCU. Mm-hmm. It could catch the person that's working uh, at KFC. It could catch the boy that's in the trap house selling dope. That's a fact. That's a fact. Like, because, like, the... Like the way y'all put the title, the way y'all be like, damn, you know. Like when y'all did that one joint, one of the major best joints is when y'all was talking about Supreme. Mm-hmm. How Supreme gave Cam, you know, Cam yeah. and them like ten thousand dollars, Jim Jones yeah. and them to promote, it, and they wind up selling it for a billion years later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How to utilize the culture to elevate their stuff, and then they said, "I'm out of here." Yeah, like I think that's major. Yeah, you know. Yeah, just giving it to them in a way they can digest it, man. Yeah, it's dige- yeah. y'all shit is digestible. It's simplistic yeah. and it's digestible. Yeah, and that's major. For y'all to be, you are educated, you are finance. Like for y'all to be on that high level, y'all were smart enough to understand, I gotta talk to my people where they are. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Even though some people might be up here, but I'm gonna talk to it where everybody get it. That's you fact. know what I mean? No, that's a fact. I wanted to ask you too, um, before we go to the last segment, consistency. Cause you're like one of the most consistent people Hands I've, down. I've seen. <laughs> on, like you, you, you really be on it. Like, how how important is that? And like how do you 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 post do you have your, your post already set the night before? Like, you know, like, the schedule already? Yeah, you know, no, I get up sometime and bang them out. Sometimes I might bang out a bunch in a day. It, depends. It's all, it always depends on It always depends on where I'm at with it because it's like, with me, it's like, I just got, it's just a feeling. Like, I might know, like, I'm getting up tomorrow at, like, 5 and I'm wilding the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, it's dope because, like, I thought, like, maybe, and, and every time we do an interview, it's different with, with the person who comes. Usually... There'll be like two or three people with them, or they have a videographer, and you come, and it's just you, and you're like, yeah, it's just me. Like I'm curing mm-hmm. everything. I'm, I'm putting the phone. Stand? Yeah, because I, I, I got to because it's like a lot of people they ain't ready for that shit. Yeah, like a lot of people say they want to go, but they don't be ready, man. I had a lot of bad experiences with videographers. They ain't turning my shit around on time. They hold my stuff. I'm like, I'm not dealing with so that. You just shit. took control of it all. I gotta take care of the people. I can't take care of the people if you hold me up. Mm. No, that's a fact. All right, so we're going to head to the last time. We're going to talk about the number one podcast, your podcast, and it's merch and Million some other dollars. stuff as well. For sure. All right, so we're going we gonna to finish it out. I want to talk about the podcast, though, because uh, we got obviously we got a podcast. Yeah. But So you got a podcast with your cousin, Gilly. Shout out to Gilly. Uh, y'all, yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all tearing it up, man. Y'all tearing it up on audio. Y'all tearing it up on YouTube. What was the idea for that? Because that's, that's actually dope, too, because y'all got two different. I look at you as, like, two different. I'm um, brands like you know what I'm saying. It's like two different brands. It's two completely different brands. Your family, obviously. Um, so like, but that's actually a dope. Like even from a business standpoint, it's like, all right, Gilly got his following. You got your following. Was that the idea? Like, yo, let's let's just combine this and like really just blow it out the water. Yeah, uh, Gilly always been doing his thing. Cuz always been doing his thing with million dollars worth of game. 
they giving up that stuff on Instagram for years. Yeah. I'm talking about for years. He's been yeah. doing this shit for like 10 years. <laughs> right. Uh, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, um, <laughs> and me and him is always, we's always together. They was like, damn, start a podcast because we always together tripping out. Doing us living no, our life before we the just, podcast. Uh, yeah, we just document <laughs> our life because we still on some shit. Like I came home from prison, we still on some shit. Like before I went, like young, we just be tripping out all day. That's how we, you know, we just we live. We don't give. Like we really don't care. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. I think so the first like, time, the first time I ever heard the word nut ass was like Gilly calling you that. He's yeah, like, yeah. He just, we, I'm know, like, wait, what? That's like a Philly saying. <laughs> yeah, nut yeah, ass Philly, thing, you know Philly, shout to Philly. Yeah, I mean, so it was like we said we the people kept asking about that podcast. Y'all need a podcast, and we did it, and it just like took. You know, I even called you about some. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah. about to fact, say like I that, called you like, "Yo, man, how you?" You know what I mean? Yes, I, mean yo, <laughs> that, I was on that call. I remember it was like no, humbling yo, to me because yeah. I'm like, "Yo, no, I asked Wallow's accent. Like, I asked questions. How, what one, mics? One we thing use? about one thing that's good about me. I asked stuff. What type mics you use? Type of this, that, third. Because I was just gonna shoot it on my iPhone. You know what I mean? Like I shoot where it was Wallow. I ain't yeah. care. Yeah. And he was like, "No, we can't do that because we got to get the audio." And yeah. I was like, "All right, cool, cause cause you know I'm cool. I just go." <laughs> yo, at that point, I was like, "Yo, I, I I felt like an engineer. I'm like, yo, he just asked me what we're using, how we record. No, that's how you. I'm like. One Damn, thing about bro, me. We, one thing about me. Validated now. I take advantage of information. I'm. I, I take advantage of the acts. Meaning, you got to ask somebody. Like we be people be out here thinking, oh, I got it all. Fuck no. Nah, I'm going to ask you, so at least I get some game. And if I mess up, you told me what was right. That's on me. Yeah. But I'm going to ask you if I know you doing it and you making it happen. I'm like, yo, how you do this? You see what I'm saying? Nah, it's dope for me because, like you said, I, before that call, you called me before you started the podcast because we had a podcast going for, already, and you was like, "Yo, we about to start this podcast." Um, and you asked me like, "Who we use?" I, we use Anchor. I'm like, "We use Anchor," and I was telling you like different stuff like that, and um, it was dope to, for me to watch that like. To where it is now, to like the number one podcast, yeah. like you know what I'm saying, it's Killing like you literally. But that just goes. But see, to this show. was crazy. The only thing I didn't done, it was a brother named in Philly named Prince Donnell. Right, shout yeah, out to shout Prince Donnell. He, 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 he came on the podcast. He came on the podcast. Prince Donnell. Yeah, the one thing us. about him, I called him one time. He put me down with Buzz Sprout. Mm -hmm. He was. I was like, damn, because I was like, yo, because I seen that. Y'all think it was a little more elaborate. His thing was more simplistic. He just had a joint. joint. Yeah. I'm like, yo, man, what joint you use, man? He said, wow, I use Buzz Pro. He sent me the joint. Like, here go the package to get. I ain't get the package because we wound up going to the studio where they had anything in yeah. there. But he sent me the package of what to get. He was like, yo, get this Wallow. And he was like, uh, he was like, this the platform I use, Buzzsprout. Mm -hmm. I was like, what's so he said, man, they get you all your analytics, they spit you everywhere, they put you on Apple, Spotify, boom, boom, boom. All you do is upload it there and it go everywhere, you set the date. I was like, oh, this shit like Distro Kid or like TuneCore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like TuneCore, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, yeah, man, and then it was like, it was a rap. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, we had that conversation too. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, they, they send it to different outlets, da, 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 yeah. da. And um, yeah, so to see it, number one, in a short period of time, very, rose, yeah, rose very yeah, quickly. Yeah, 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 the, the first day we came out, we went, we went all the way up to number two in comedy. Then we went all the way to number four in every podcast on our Apple yeah. that day. So that was dope. You know what I mean? Then we went, you know what I mean? We, we was in music category. We went. To, we did number one, 17 Week Street. Congratulations yeah, on congrats that. Congrats on that, man. That was, so, the so, is crazy. so like the, um, the podcast, right? Because we have a podcast, obviously. So um, I always tell people like there's different business opportunities off of that. So like now you do like live shows, right? You can do live shows, you got you got live shows, you got merch, you got advertising dollars, all that stuff, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like if you got a podcast, you got YouTube, this, YouTube, yep. YouTube money, yeah, that's yeah. that's sick. So you got <laughs> let's not let's not breeze over that. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this. If you got a podcast, this is how you make it. You got the YouTube money, you got your merch. You got your live show. You got to catch. Man, I don't care if you did a live show. Like a lot of people be thinking, oh, you need all these people. You might do a live show for 30 people in charge. You might do a live show for 50. But you build it up. You create a great experience, a dope experience. You know, and uh, you might go barter the spot, the location. Create a dope experience. And uh, people going to tell other people they're going to build up. Now, you make money off the YouTube, the merch, the live show, the ad dollars. You see what I'm saying? That's where you cake up off here. Ad dollars is like this. A lot of people think... The reality is, it's over like what million podcasts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's close to a million podcasts. Uh, the one percent of podcasts is, is the ones that do like fifty thousand plus per episode. We're part of that one million dollars worth of game. Is one part of that one percent of the uh, podcast industry per week or for a thirty day stretch? Per, no, every time we like per episode, like per episode, like per episode yeah. gotcha. every episode, gotcha. not just the week. Like the episode because the week we might do something stupid, but the week we, we you go crazy. Yeah. yeah, but like each episode, you know, what I mean, within that we gonna do fifty. Okay, so it's like 
or more. So it's like, or number one joint did like one something. 100,000? Yeah, our first joint, that shit just did wow. crazy. But like the whole thing is like understanding that once you get them numbers, like everybody ain't going to do get the Joe Buttons deal. Mm-hmm. Everybody's not going to sign the big, you know, the big deals or whatever. But what you can do is this. If you have a podcast and it's a local podcast, like get your own local, even though you put on a podcast thing, it's national, it's like everywhere, it's global. Yeah, global, it's fine. But if, if you could build your brand up enough, you could be able to approach local businesses, local, pl- like there's no rules to who can sponsor you or who could pay for ads on your podcast. You get the corner, if, if, if the corner store want to say, you know what I mean, this Mike's Corner Store, this Mike Hoagie Shop, or this what's the name Cheese Steak, or this what's Charlie's the name, Car Dealer Charlie Hot Dip, <laughs> or, or the Car Dealer Shop, yeah. or, or the, uh, I'm telling you, I don't care, or the, this clothing line, independent clothing line. Anybody can sponsor your podcast. And we we come up, yeah. How you doing, man? You know, how you doing? This is uh, this is the get this is the get down podcast. You know, and we sponsored by Mikey's T shirts. It could be sponsored by anybody. Stop thinking that you know you you, you just got to figure out what is the worth. And so it's cool to build up. Like they might be, you might have somebody sponsoring your podcast, and and they might not be giving you money. They might be giving you the location to do it in. You might have somebody sponsoring your podcast, and they might buy you the equipment. They might buy you better mics, and they might buy you better earphones, whatever. Like you might don't you. It might don't be about money. It might be a barter. You see what I'm saying? Somebody might sponsor your podcast. It depends on what you're looking for. I'm just saying, everybody ain't probably don't get the money. You might have somebody to just give you the food for every time you have a podcast. Yeah. Like it, it's different things, man. You might go. You might go and get with a um, with some places that they sell a. Uh, the mics and the speakers and all oh, that. Oh, like uh, Guitar Center. Guitar, like guitar Center. Yeah. You might get a sponsor from Guitar Center. They might sponsor your, your equipment. Make sure you got new stuff. And you say, yeah, this is brought to you by Guitar Center. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to understand, like, in this podcast game, it's just like, there, it's, it's like, there's no real top flight structure on it, how you could be, like, how you, you know what I mean? Who no could, rules. No rules. Like, yeah. you really could create your own world and could create your own success off of this stuff. I'm talking about just anything that you could think of. I'm talking about. I'm talking about anything. It could be a peanut company. It could be. It could be anything. I'm talking about. It could be uh, RNS Strauss. It could be AutoZone. It could be. Uh, I don't know. It could be just anything. It could be a print shop. I mean, they can sponsor you. So so have the to just have have the have that just that outlook of I can step to anybody. But make sure you got your per, you know your infrastructure together. You got your, your you know your, your, you know your introduction kit together. And just go at people, man. It's, I'm talking about, but think about it. Anybody. That's a fact. That's part of being independent, too. Yeah, right. Because yeah. if you're under an umbrella of somebody else, then there yeah. might be some some language yeah. in there where you couldn't do it. But yeah. being independent is key in part in That's that major. process. So one thing you said about, um, you know, women always, they show a lot of love and they, they give game and all that. And um, your lady's an entrepreneur. Yeah, right? she ain't no joke. She's a monster. She give me game. Like, she... She give me game. Like, we'll be sitting back laying in bed and just trading game. Mm. God's attention is motivation, education. We good with that. We play like, it's like ping pong. She'll say something. I'll be like, damn. She'll be like, yeah, that's. I'll say something. She'll be like, damn. I'll be like, damn, that, yeah. So, and, and it's real, it's real, uh, it's a nurturing, it's real nurturing when you got somebody that you can shoot back and forth and they, and, they, and that mind is there, that mind of understanding, marketing, understanding the game, understanding the, the temperature of or the environment, understanding that, that's major. Yeah. Cause I tell people that all the time. It's like your partner could either make or break you. Like you know, yeah, even they go, even they gonna hold you down or hold you up. That's, that's a fact. That that's is, a, you know, that's that's absolute fact. That's a gem. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, a fact. That's a gem for sure. Yeah. Um, what made you want to get into um the trademark game and all? Cause I know you got a lot of. Like I told you it was a guy in jail that gave me the game. Like he was a, he was an intellectual property attorney. It was arrested, and he gave me the game about trademarks. And I used to read about it, and then I was always curious about brands. And I was you know growing up, you see that see that logo TM thing, and you see that yeah. R. Mm-hmm. Put two pages of what's name like what that and then you realize something yeah. like trademark register yeah. it was deep you know so New York versus the world that, that's you, that's right? mine New York versus the world is mine Atlanta versus the world is mine Philadelphia versus the world is mine Houston versus the world is mine Wallow 267 is mine uh we own a million dollars worth of game what about it's just are. like that uh no, that's not mine. Ain't this crazy? Uh, I love that's that. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Cool. No, somebody had that, but it's cool. Damn. Uh, uh, we ain't gonna uh, say uh, it then. It's always money in Atlanta, <laughs> Philadelphia, all that stuff. Like New York. Always money in real estate. Always money in real estate. That's big. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you know, I, it's so much more. But it's like, I believe you know, just trademark your stuff is simple. A couple hundred dollars, man. And you trademarking it on just the merch or being used in any? Form like basically, of- I, I basically trademark it for what I use it for. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean. 
It's, it's too many categories. It's mad category. yeah. like, that's something we have to it's learn like, too. It's like thirty categories. But that's like I said, <laughs> we, we learned that on the fly too. Like we trademarked um, assets over liability. We trademarked earn your leisure, and we. That, I didn't know that when you trademark something, it's not just like I trademark it. It's like. Twelve different categories. Yeah, what category are you doing it for? Sports, like it's like entertainment, so many, yeah. like 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 you got furniture. Like you ain't gonna trade market for furniture. Exactly. Right? Have it's, furniture. Like, it's like what's the point? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you ain't gonna trade market for steel or irons and shit. You know what I mean? So it's like it's different stuff. Yeah, but that, fabric, different, different countries too. Different countries too. Yeah. It's nah, it's dope, and it's like all this stuff is just we just learning. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's the whole thing with the podcast. It's like it's so much but, stuff that we don't know. It's like we just. Learn. But what I like, y'all learn and y'all give it out. That's it. That's the key. Mm-hmm. That's the key. Learning That's the, the key. game and give it right back. So sp- speaking of the podcast, you got you got you got an announcement, man. By the time this episode drops, you you got yeah, we, you know we signed a partnership with a uh, bar stew sports, and uh, it was a great partnership. Uh, you know, just a nice a nice partnership. They coming in and they helping us. They they really putting gasoline on the situation, and they understand our brand. They respect it. We got all cre- We keep our creative control because it's a partnership. So you know, what I mean, we didn't sell our brand. We didn't sell you know, what I mean, sell our stuff and uh. It's, it's, it's great, man. It, like this stuff, you know, we did that within like thirty-seven episodes, thirty-six. That quick, we closed yeah. it down. That you know quick. what I mean? We was able to negotiate something. Uh, we was in talk with other companies like Spotify, mm-hmm. you know, other people, and it was like it's great, man. It was like it was all great combos, man. Yeah. Everybody came at us right. You know, we 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 went with the uh, we went with the company. We felt as though it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be more mutually beneficial for both of us, and we gonna we gonna be able to win. Yeah, man, to win the team. Congrats like, on that, man. Yeah, congratulations for sure. And what you said is like when you get hot, it's like the law of inertia. Like once something gets moving, it's it. Like, and I always tell people all the time, like when you have a spark of fire, you got to throw gasoline on it. You got to, and it's the gasoline. It's got to throw gasoline on it. <laughs> it's the gas. This is serious, guys. It's the gas station. <laughs> gas station. And <laughs> fuego. Uh, <laughs> Nah, Wallow, man. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for, for oh, joining man. us, man. Yeah. Shout out to, to Philly, come, man. I had to come and show y'all some love. Y'all y'all keep doing y'all thing. Y'all gonna be big. Y'all in the space by yourself. Y'all giving up game. Y'all educating our people. Y'all y'all making our people wanna want 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 to want look forward to information. That's major. When y'all could because y'all cause it's like it's, it's digestible, as you know, and you know, it's just so simplistic. And that's major. I, you know, I think sometimes people get the education and they just want to be so far up. Yeah. They just try to throw just to show that they smart. Y'all not trying to show y'all smart. Y'all <laughs> yeah. want anybody to be smart. That's yeah. And that's major, man. And I think y'all going to do big things. Keep doing the live show. Keep the merch company. Uh, keep keep building uh, partnerships with, you know, brands and companies that, that want, that, that's going to add value to what y'all are going and can enhance y'all visibility out here. And I think everything is going to play out, man. Y'all ain't got nothing to worry about, man. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that, bro. Troy, some housekeeping items? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. That is our Proud to Pay program. Um, As you know, we put bonus content. You get the uh, episodes early. You get to talk to Rashad and myself. Um, And um, if you're a Tier 4 or 5 member, you know you have access to EYL University, our online school. That is moving crazy. Um, Obviously, we have our merch on. So shout out to everybody that's been supporting the merch on EarnYourLeisure.com. Uh, shout you want to talk about Oh wait Before I go I gotta give a shout out To some new members On Patreon Cause they be like Oh man you ain't shout me out So I wanna give a big shout out To Elisa Shout out to Kyle And shout out to Maurice uh, Maurice actually is a Tier 4 member So you have access To Tier 4 Maurice five. Shout out to you And um, yeah EYL University uh, Three times a week We are on there uh, we have a Monday episode with Matt uh, talking about different topics in real estate. Wednesday, we have a guest webinar. Um, a lot of times, it's our alumni that come on, so definitely check them out. And then Thursday, Rashad and myself, I don't even know why I say Rashad, Shadi and myself, we uh, we, we do a, a different business lesson. So that's dope. And we got EYL Espanol launching in 2020. So it's, it's time, y'all. Every community yeah, needs to have financial literacy, and we're going to make sure that we are the pillars that can provide that. Yeah, EYL University, That's the we started our own school. So we teach three classes a week. It's whole, lot of games. <laughs> whole lot of games. A <laughs> whole lot of games. A whole lot of Million dollars worth of games. Million dollars worth of games. <laughs> a million dollars worth of games. Big That's fact. A fact. <laughs> Don't forget ATL, uh, January 25th, 26th. We are coming. We bring everybody with us. It's going to be huge, huge, huge. We're going to do it real, real big for the city. The A, a whole A is going to come out. Um, looking forward to it. Book tip of the week. None other than our guy, Maurice Clorette. One and done. 
Oh, ain't that something? One and yeah. done. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's right. Maurice. Make that's sure, my man. That's my guy, man. He's a legend. He's a good dude, man. Legend. He's, a, he's actually, you introduced me to him. Yeah. And um, we we developed our own relationship after that. And he, he, he hits you, me. I told you. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. Because he so. seen you, he was like, I mess with them. I said, I mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm jumping right on the phone. Hold up. <laughs> Call right through. Yo, yo, sh- 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 listen. Uh, yeah, yeah, Reese on the phone. Oh, yeah? Go ahead, talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's dope. for sure. So, yeah, man. Um, thank you guys for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. 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 Peace.